going to jump on up here if you don't mind. So I just want to say a couple words myself. We have a mass confusion in this country, and that confusion has to do with words. Words are the most important part of civilization, because it is the words that we use that define the laws that keep the peace among such a vast array of different people with different beliefs, different wants, desires, needs, who are just different. And that's what makes a democracy. When words are manipulated, and you don't understand the definitions, it is very easy to get you to support something you never would. Pay attention to the words your politicians use. Define them. Define them for what they actually mean. And then think twice about what you support. We have to come together in this country. We have one shared obligation, no matter what our differences are, and that is to provide our children with a better world than the one we were given. Yeah. Our health, our prosperity, our sobriety, all depends on us. And with that, I'm going to bring up Chris Skye, and oh, you're just going to love him. You just will. Thank you, Kelly. Hello everybody, I'm Chris Guy. some of you know me, some of you are going to know me now. <laughs> Guys, we're in big trouble. We are facing the biggest crisis our country has faced in its entirety of its existence. And I'm not talking about COVID, I'm talking about our government. Government loves the phrase, never let a good crisis go to waste. And when you understand that the government, not COVID, created this crisis we're in, you understand that the loss of our freedoms, all our rights, the ability to go to work, and them trying to micromanage every aspect of our lives is about control. It's about trying to change that them working for us instead of, it's them ruling us instead of them working for us. How are they doing this? In any country in the world, when you go away and you ask them, what do you think of Canada? They smile and the first thing they think of is freedom. Freedom is essential to any country that wants to be successful and content. Freedom of choice for the people is essential. We are all essential. If you allow the government to decide who is essential, if you allow the government to decide who are winners and who are losers, we all lose. But free, for freedom to reign free, truth must be widespread. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to spread the truth right now because the government is using lies. Lies through their government and their media. Mass media, mass lies through the TV to make people ignorant. Why? When you're ignorant and you don't know, you're afraid. When you're afraid, they can manipulate you. They can tell you to do ridiculous things that you know are against your best interests. And you'll do them because you don't know any better. That's the idea of ignorance. So let's say that again. For, tr for freedom to reign, truth must reign. For tyranny to reign, it relies on ignorance. And what do we know about lies? Lies need to be told over and over again by as many people as possible in order for them to be effective. And that's what we're seeing. However, the truth resonates. It only needs to be told once. And then once you are awake, you cannot go back to sleep. And once you are awake, it is your responsibility to wake everybody else up. That's how you overcome the ignorance with the truth. And to overcome the fear, we use courage. The number one target of, the, of our government's crisis right now are our small businesses. That's what led me to make the Facebook boot back to work and the nonprofit agency back to work. Our small businesses represent 97% of all businesses in the country. They represent 70% of all of Canada's jobs. At the start of 2020, we had 1.15 million small businesses in this country thriving. As of June, 
we had already lost over 225,000 of those businesses. All the jobs they represent in the millions and all the families they support forever. This is GDP that's gone and not coming back. And more importantly, these are once people that were independent and stable who are now dependent on the government for their very survival. And when you are dependent on the government for your survival, they no longer work for you, they rule you. When you need to collect a check from them to live, they can tell you something as ridiculous as wear a mandatory mask, which we know is a symbol of slavery. It's a symbol of oppression. A symbol of compliance when you know it's not in your best interest. And if you comply with the first dictate, the next one will be contact tracing. The next one will be mandatory vaccines, followed by the digital ID. And that's why the government is trying to put as many people from the independent and stable category to the government dependent category. And that's why we started back to work. We get businesses to sign up to an anonymous network. We, I meet them personally. I go over their lease. I try to renegotiate their lease so they don't lose their business. We give them an adaptive business model tailored to their exact business that allows them to generate revenue even though they have to abide by government guidelines. We have a legal team in place that protects them if any government bylaw officer tries to charge them. And we have a privately funded legal fund that pays their legal fees if they get charged by the government. Why are we doing this? Because like I've said, to combat fear, we need the truth. So I give these people the truth. But then to combat fear, we also need courage. And that's what Back to Work provides these businesses. They provide them the courage of unity, of knowing they're not alone, knowing they have other people fighting for their rights, knowing they have the finances available to them. And it's been very successful. We've had a 100% open rate and a 0% bylaw infraction rate thus far. And you know, you know they're planning a second wave in the fall and they're going to shut everybody down again. Yeah. And that's when back to work is going to be even more important because all those businesses that are struggling now and barely surviving under these new guidelines, 50% capacity and social distancing, what do you think is going to happen to them when they get shut down for their next two weeks? Yeah. They're going to all go under. And if make no mistake, if our small businesses crash, our economy goes with it. And when our economy goes with it, combined with a three, four, hundred billion dollar deficit our taxes are going to go through the roof you're going to see a covid surcharge pop up on your bills in the next few weeks if you haven't already it's a new tax but they'll call it a surcharge you're going to get told that your hst is going to rise in the spring and it's going to rise every year to try to make up for this shortfall crb got extended because they know there's going to be more mass unemployment and they're going to try to extend it indefinitely and call it universal income yes. So now that we know what the government's doing, oh, and if you doubt that this, if you still doubt that this is all planned, this is all intentional, and you don't believe that our government has connections to non-government agencies, and that's all a so-called conspiracy theory, I point you to our, pre, our Deputy Prime Minister, Christia Freeland. She's an author. She just got paid by someone very famous to write his personal biography, and I want this to be public. Thank you. Mr. George Soros is paying paychecks directly to our deputy PM. And you don't think he has an influence over our government? That's absolutely ridiculous. To make matters worse, she's the one that went on record saying that our opening plan is going to take until 2021. And a lot of businesses that were previously viable are just going to have to close forever under the new normal. She wrote a book in 2012. The title of her book is so coincidental of what's going on right now. You know it's not, it can't be a coincidence. While she is enforcing policies to destroy our small business, destroy our economy, and bring big business like Amazon and Walmart to record highs, as we've seen, she wrote a book called Plutocrats, The Rise of the Global Super Rich and the Fall of Everybody Else. That's all of you. This is our deputy PM getting paid by George Soros and writing books about the fall of the middle class while enforcing policies to destroy the middle class. So now that we know that they're doing this on purpose, now that we know their primary targets, now that I know I've given you a way to fight back, I gotta, I gotta almost catch up because they're giving me a time limit here, so I'm gonna talk about my next initiative really quickly. 
We need massive awareness. Massive awareness because they try to divide us. They try to divide us in many ways because if we're divided, smaller and smaller factions cannot fight back. If we're unified in one voice, we can. So first they divided us between people who were scared of the virus versus people who weren't. Then they divided us by people who were working and people who were not working. Then they attempted to divide us via race like they did in the States with the race riots. Now they started the whole defund the police to turn the people against the police. Why? Smaller and smaller factions. I'm here to tell us we all need to be united. This needs to be the summer of united non-compliance. That's what we need to celebrate on this camera today. United non-compliance. Say no to the mask. Say no to the contact tracing. Say no to the kids in schools. And that's my next initiative. I created a group, a web page, and a TV series that's going to be a web series called MAD. Mothers Against Distancing. Every mother, every parent needs to be made aware internationally by the hundreds of millions of the psychological and physiological damage that social distancing will have on their children, especially in an academic setting over a prolonged period. Our plan is to infect as many people with that deadly thing called the truth. And wake them up. So by September, through united non-compliance, no sane parent is going to send their parent, uh, their child to one of those schools. Every parent is going to stand up and say no. And the government will realize that we have the power at that point. They have to do what we say. And if we can abolish social distancing in our schools that easily, we can do so everywhere else. The government keeps trying to push this new normal. They try to make you feel like you're alone. We're here to tell you you're not alone. We're bringing everybody together under one umbrella to fight for our rights to fight for our businesses, to fight for our children. There is nothing more important than our children. They are the future. We must protect them. We must get mad. Why do you need to get mad? When you are mad, you cannot be controlled. When you are mad, you will act in your best interests. When you are mad, you will speak out to others. So I implore all of you, get mad. This is something to be angry about. Stand up for your rights. Remember what freedom feels like. What we're doing here today is illegal, and we did it anyway. Thank you very much.